So, you have some new Harry Potter for me? Yes, sir, I do. So the Dursleys have this very important business dinner, right? And Harry has to stop this wacky house elf from disrupting it. Oh. So this is like a Harry Potter sitcom spin-off? No, actually, it's a movie. Really? Yeah, see, the Malfoy servant Dobby shows up because he wants to stop Harry from returning to Hogwarts. He says something bad is being planned. Oh, uh, sounds dangerous. It will be. So after Dobby ruins this dinner, the Dursleys are sick of having Harry living in their house. So what do they do? Well, they make sure Harry can't leave their house. I see no problem with that logic, sure. But then Harry gets rescued by the Weasley kids in a flying car, so he escapes. Oh boy, time for the Hogwarts Express. Uh, we'll actually see Dobby makes them miss the train, so they take the flying car to school and crash into the Whomping Willow. What's the Whomping Willow? It's just this tree they have at the school where if you get too close to it, it bludgeons you to death. Oh my god, why would they have that at a school? Well, in the next book we find out is to conceal a passageway for this werewolf to go transform. So put a spell or something, isn't there a concealing spell? Yeah, I mean, probably, but they go with tree that might punch a child to death. Jeez. And then the car drives itself off into the Forbidden Forest, because I I guess it has a mind of its own. Oh, it does. Yeah, well, wizards seem to have this casual godlike power to spontaneously create life. Like, Ron makes a bunch of slugs, Malfoy makes a snake. Oh, that has massive moral implications. No, it doesn't. Oh, all right. So there's this new defense against the dark arts teacher, Gilderoy Lockhart, right? And what's his deal? Well, he's this super famous wizard who wrote a bunch of books about his encounters with dark creatures, except he's a fraud. He didn't do any of it. Why would a celebrity accept a job teaching things he doesn't know and risk being exposed? I don't know. Well, okay then. So anyway, throughout the school year, there's this mysterious monster going around the school, and it petrifies some students and a cat and Hermione and a ghost. Oh no. Yeah, and so people are trying to figure out what it is, right? Wow, well thank god they have those talking portraits all over the school. One of them must have seen something. No. All right. And so the only way to unpetrify these people is to make this potion using mandrakes, but they take a while to mature. And how are they planning on unpetrifying the ghost? Oh, off screen. Oh, perfect. So everybody's trying to figure out who's responsible for this, you know, and people suspect Harry. How come? Oh, the whole school sees him during a silent night walk. You know when you walk with your whole school through the hallway silently together? That's not a thing. It might be. And then also Hagrid gets blamed, so he gets sent to Azkaban prison. Oh no. Yeah, so he tells Harry and Ron to go talk to a giant spider in the forest. Seems dangerous, kind of messed up that he sent them there. Yeah, and so this giant spider's like, yeah, Hagrid's innocent. I guess that's why he sent you to clear his own name. Anyway, now my children will eat you. Oh man, it's gonna be hard to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because out of nowhere, that magic car shows up because it can think for itself, which isn't a horrifying thought, I guess. A machina ex machina, as the Italians would say. They wouldn't say that. So eventually, we find out that Ginny is actually being manipulated by the diary of Voldemort. He's the bad guy. Yeah, and so she's the one who opened this chamber of secrets place in the school and set the monster free. And so what is this monster? It's called a basilisk, and it's this massive snake that was moving through the school's plumbing. Jeez, how big are the school's pipes? Well, these wizard kids eat a lot, sir. Food just kind of appears. That's a good point, and that's a lot of food. And if you make eye contact with a basilisk, you die. But everybody saw it indirectly, so they were petrified. And the giant snake doesn't eat anyone afterwards? No, it just spooks them, then back to the poop tubes. Got it. And so how did they figure all this out? Well, one day Ginny had decided to dispose of the diary by throwing it in a toilet. That is how people get rid of books. Then Harry found the book, so obviously he kept it. Can't blame him. Toilet books are tight. And so Harry DMs with Voldemort for a little bit, because his 16-year-old self is preserved in the diary. A little chat sesh with Voldy, sure. So eventually Harry and Ron head into the Chamber of Secrets with Professor Lockhart, because Ginny's been taken down there. Oh, that seems like the worst teacher they could bring. Yeah, and he is, because he tries to erase their memories to take credit for all their bravery. Does it work? No, because he uses Ron's broken wand, so it backfires and he erases his own memory, which is perfect, because now Ron can stay back with him. Why is that a good thing? Well, because Harry's the main character, and it's cooler if he goes alone. That is true. So then Harry meets Voldemort, except he used to go by Tom Riddle, and he shows Harry some cool wordplay he did to come up with his name. Wow, two guys in robes doing wordplay in a basement? It's kind of crazy that this is going to make like a billion dollars. Well, it does get a little more exciting, sir, because Harry has to 
fight a basilisk now. Oh man, it's gonna be hard to stand a chance against that thing. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because Dumbledore's Phoenix Fox shows up out of nowhere and he pokes the basilisk's eyes out and gives Harry a sword and heals him when he gets hurt. Should this maybe be called Fox in the Chamber of Secrets? Seems like he's taking care of pretty much everything. Well, Harry does a couple things. He stabs the snake and he stabs a book. A very stabby wizard. What else does he stab? That's it for the stabbing. Oh. And so Dumbledore's so happy that Harry killed a snake and stabbed a book that he cancels everybody's exams. Oh, this guy doesn't give a crap about their education. Not really, no. Sick. Oh, and also we find out that Draco's father, Lucius, is the one who slipped the diary to Ginny at the beginning of the movie. Very sneaky. It is. And then Harry tricks Lucius into setting his house elf Dobby free. How does he manage that? Well, see, the only way to set a house elf free is to present it with clothing, right? Okay. So Harry hides a sock inside a book that he gives to Lucius, so when he gives it to Dobby, he technically gives him clothing. Oh, so it's literally if you accidentally hand them clothes, they're free. It would seem so, sir. And that makes for a super complicated laundry day. Yeah, I guess it does. So then Lucius is so mad, he tries to murder Harry, but Dobby jumps in and saves the day. Oh, is he just gonna use a death curse on an 11-year-old on school grounds? Yes. This guy's hardcore. He is, but Dobby saves the day, so that's nice. So why was Dobby specific? specifically warning Harry at the beginning of the movie. Seems like a bunch of people were in danger. Well, Harry's the main character. That's a good point. Wow, well, I kind of like this Dobby character. I know, right? But don't get too attached. I think JK's gonna kill all the cute ones. Oh my god, no. 